Today I'll show you 10 VS Code tips that you definitely want to know. Even if you already use VS Code for some time, there should be some tips here that you didn't know about that you definitely want to try. If you're only going to remember one keyboard shortcut, let it be Command Shift B to open the command palette. This allows you to easily access basically every action you can do on VS Code. For example, I use it a lot for GitHub commands. Things like pulling from the latest changes, switching to another branch, pulling the changes from another branch into the current branch, but this is just one example. You'll be impressed with how many useful things you can do from the command palette. Things like comparing the current file with what you have on your clipboard, or also some editing actions like converting the indentation between tabs and spaces, or converting a variable from snake case to camel case or pascal case, or you can even toggle Zen mode to remove distractions from the screen and focus on coding, and many other useful actions, all from a single shortcut. But there are some other shortcuts that will make your coding sessions a lot more productive, which brings us to the second tip. If you open the command palette and type Interactive Editor Playground, you will open an interactive editing tutorial that will teach you some of the most important basic editing shortcuts. Things like Moody cursor editing, or how to use IntelliSense, moving lines up and down, copying lines up and down, deleting lines, refactoring, formatting, cycling through arrows and warnings, and some other things. I highly recommend you take a look at this tutorial to see if there are some things you don't know about. But I want to share a few other shortcuts that I use a lot but are not included in here. When you want to select the same word on multiple places, instead of holding Option and double clicking each word, you can just select the first one and then press Command D to select the next instance of the same selection. Then you can edit all of them at the same time. Another cool one is the Expand Selection shortcut. Let's say I want to select everything inside these quotes. All I have to do is to put my cursor inside and press Command Shift Control Right Arrow. This will select the whole word, and if I keep pressing it, I can expand it to the quotes. I can keep going if I want to select the whole brackets or even the whole function. And by using the left arrow instead of the right one, I can go back to the initial selection. This basically understands anything that encloses something, like quotes, brackets, or even HTML tags. There are also some navigation shortcuts that I use all the time. Let's say you use command click to go to the definition of a function, and then did it again, and then one more time. But now you want to go back to where you started. You can make your cursor go back in time by pressing Ctrl minus until you go back to the initial place. You can also go forward with Ctrl underscore. There are also some other more well-known shortcuts for navigation, like command P to search files by file name, or Ctrl tab to switch between recent tabs, or command F to search or replace words in the current file, or command shift f to search or replace words in your whole project. By the way, if you're using Windows or if for some reason your shortcuts are different than mine, you can just search it by name on the command palette and check the shortcut from here. Ok, let's go to the next tip. You can customize a lot of things on VS Code. Some of them are just some small aesthetic stuff, but some of them are actually quite useful. Let me show you everything I changed on my setup, starting with the icon theme. The one I use is called Material Icon Theme, and you can install it from the extensions tab. It will change our files from this to this. It not only looks better, but it also makes it quite easier to find folders and files when you're looking for them. The color theme I use is called Cobalt 2, and you can also install it from the extensions tab. The font I use is called Fira Code. To set it up, you can open your user settings from the command palette and set the font family to Fira Code. I believe this font is not included in the OS by default, so you probably need to Google it and install it in your system before setting it here. I also like to change the font size and font weight. You can play with these numbers until you get something you like. This font also has ligatures. If you turn font ligatures to true, your code will change from this to this, which looks a lot cooler in my opinion. Another thing I like to set is to render all white spaces. With this you can easily identify tabs from spaces, and you can notice double spaces or trailing spaces a lot easier. I feel that the default white space color on this theme is a little too strong. So I like to add a customization to make it a little softer. Another setting you might want to try is to set the sidebar to the right. This one is a personal preference. The main reason behind it is that if you use Command B a lot to open and close the sidebar, you'll notice that your code moves every time. If you have the sidebar on the right, you can open and close it without your code moving. When I tried it at first it felt a little weird, but after some days I got used to it and that's how I like to use it now. And the last thing I like to change is to enable sticky scroll. The function name or property name will stick to the top of the file so you will always know what you're looking at. 
Okay, we're only at the third tip. If you've already learned something new, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Let's go to the next one. The settings I've been showing until now are the user settings, which applies to all of your projects. But there is also a workspace settings, which is specific for the current project. The cool thing about workspace settings is that it is saved on a file inside of your project and you can commit that file into GitHub, which is very useful if you're working on a team and you want to make sure everyone on your team uses some specific settings. Something like choosing which formatter to use for each type of file and setting format on save to true to make sure every file is correctly formatted. One other thing I sometimes like to set in the workspace settings is the title bar color. If it is common for you to have multiple projects open at once, setting a specific color for each of them makes it a lot easier to recognize the right project to open. I first saw this on the TRPC repo and decided to try it out and loved it. But yeah, some of this configuration might require some specific extensions. If you want all members of your team to install some extensions, you can open the extensions tab, click on the configuration icon and click on add to workspace recommendation. This will create a JSON file with all the recommended extensions and when the team members open the project for the first time, they will be prompted to install all the workspace recommended extensions. In case they accidentally close this prompt, they can just search for Edmark recommended in the extensions tab and click this button to install all of them. Another thing that can be useful is to set up custom snippets specific for your project. Let's say all APIs on my app follows this structure. The file name is in snake case and the function name matches it but in camel case. Then there are the schemas, which will be different for each API, and finally the actual API handler. We can turn this into a snippet. And the good thing is that nowadays we don't even need to learn how to write the snippets ourselves. Just ask for some of the AI chatbots to make them for you. Then you can open the command palette, search for snippets, select configure snippets, then select to create a new snippet file on your project and then just paste the JSON generated by the AI. There are some default values here that I don't want, so I'm just gonna delete them. The prefix for this snippet is API. So if you create a new file and just type API and then press tab, the snippet will be inserted with the handler name matching the file name by default. And we can change that handler name and press tab to change the input schema, then press tab again to change the output schema, and finally press tab to implement the actual handler. Snippets are quite flexible. You can use metadata like file name or folder name and modify them the way you want. You might want to take a look in your current project to see if there is some code you write a lot that could be made into a snippet. Okay, now let me show you some extensions that should be useful for most developers, regardless of what programming language they use. The first one is Thunder Client, in case you want to make HTTP requests to test your APIs. If you've ever used Postman, it's basically that, but inside of your IDE. You can make requests, save them, organize them into collections and much more. The next one is called MySQL. With this, you have a fully functional database manager inside of your IDE. You can see and edit data and even run SQL queries directly from an SQL file. I mostly use it for MySQL, but apparently it can also be connected to many other databases. It is not a perfect database GUI, but it works well for most of the basic stuff. When I really need the power of a dedicated database manager app, I've been enjoying to use Table Plus. Next is the Git Lens extension. If you're not using it yet, you want to install it right now. It adds a bunch of Git related features and information. For example, you can check when each line was edited and who edited them. And when you hover it, you can see more information about the commit and even check the diff of the commit. This is just one of the many features it has and you should definitely check it out. Next one is an obvious one, Prettier. An opinionated code formatter where you can completely customize how your code is styled. And it works with many languages. You can set format and save and it will keep your code clean and readable, letting you focus on writing the code instead of styling it. There are many other extensions I like to use and I could probably make a whole video only about VS Code extensions. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in. Okay, back to the tips. Now let's talk about profiles. You'll find this very useful if you find yourself switching between different settings depending on what you're doing. From the command palette, search for new profile and create a new one with the name you want. You can use an existing profile as a template, but by default this will create an empty profile with no extensions, no custom settings or key bindings. And you can easily switch between profiles from the command palette as well. I use it to switch between the settings I usually use for actually coding and the settings I use for recording YouTube videos. 
Now that we have changed a bunch of settings, we might want to sync them to another computer, or at least back them up so that if we switch to a new computer, we don't need to set up everything from scratch again. For this, all you have to do is click on this cog here and click on Backup and Sync Settings. It will ask you to sign in with your GitHub or Microsoft account, and after that, all you need to do is use the same account on the other device and you'll be able to get all your settings. You have no idea how many times I configured VS Code from scratch before knowing this. I even created a GitHub repo with my settings file so that I could copy every time from there. Okay, have you noticed that Windows users have an option to open with VS Code, but there's no such option for Mac users by default? What if I told you that you can add this option on Mac as well? All you have to do is open the Mac native Automator app, choose Quick Action, Set this to Files and Folders, this to Finder, choose an icon and a color. Then in the Action sidebar, go to Files and Folders and double click Open Finder Items. Now you search for VS Code and you press Command S to save and choose a name for it. Now when you right click the Files and Folders, you'll see an option to open with VS Code here. You can do the same thing for basically any app that you want. Ok, next one. Let's say I have just created a new project from the terminal. Now I want to open that project on VS Code. All I have to do is write code with the project name and it should open it. It probably won't work for you if you have installed the code command. For that, all you have to do is open the command palette, search for install code and click this option. After that, you'll be able to open any folder or file in VS Code from the terminal. And that's it for the tips. If you've enjoyed this video, you probably will also like this one. See you in the next one. Janet.